This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. The conceptual framework then goes on to look at the financial statements. So the framework can't say who must prepare financial statements. That's down to the local jurisdiction whereby the entity is preparing its financial statements. But it can go through there and give you some of the key features that should appear within a set of financial statements. So when you're preparing a set of financial statements, the reason why you are preparing them is because you are a reporting entity. You are trying to go through there and give financial information to the users of the accounts to help them make improved decisions. Uh, so those financial statements, what should they go through there and include? Very simple. Uh, based upon what you've seen in financial accounting, you know the reporting entity reports the entity's assets, liabilities, income, and expenses. It's what we've seen, isn't it? On the statements of financial position, we see the assets and liabilities, and assets less liabilities gives you equity. So the framework is giving you guidance as to what you should be reporting there on the SFP. And then in statements of profit or loss, it's giving you guidance as to the reporting of your income and your expenses. Uh, what you need then, however, is to think about how those assets, liabilities, income and expenses are reported. For what type of reporting entity are they prepared? Because within this syllabus, within financial reporting, you'll see it referred to at the individual company accounts. So when you prepare a statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss, statement of changes in equity from a trial balance. But as we get to the end of the syllabus, you'll also go through as well and see us talk about your group statement of financial position, your group statement of profit or loss. There is a group statement of changes in equity as well, but we don't really cover that at all within financial reporting. So what you've got there effectively are the first two bullet points in that you've got to prepare financial statements for a set of consolidated financial statements. So that's basically your group accounts. So you've touched upon group accounts very briefly in financial accounting, whereby you have a parent that controls a subsidiary. If you're preparing the group set of accounts, then you need to report for that group, the assets, the liabilities, the income and the expenditure. Okay, uh, Your unconsolidated financial statements. Well, that's looking there at what we would refer to as your individual company accounts. So the individual company accounts that have been prepared of the parent and the individual company accounts that have been prepared of the subsidiary. So it's saying here that even though the group accounts need to be prepared, okay, uh, it's also useful to have the unconsolidated financial statements, particularly if we're looking at the reporting entity being the parent. The parent is going to prepare the parent's group account, but it will also as well give useful information uh, to help the decision making process if we show the individual account as well of the parent. We're not going to show the individual accounts of the subsidiary in P's accounts because S is a separate legal reporting entity, isn't it? So therefore, it will prepare its own accounts and have its own separate set of financial statements. Uh, you've also got there, it talks about combined financial statements. That's just a little bit off syllabus for the world of financial reporting. It's not something that you then see until SBR. Uh, but your combined financial statements are when we get into the world of IFRS 11, uh, looking at whereby we have joint control. So it's not one individual company that has control over the other. It's whereby we have two companies that have joint control over an other entity. And we have what's referred to as a, as a joint venture or a joint operation. OK, uh, but we talk about the accounting for that in SBR. So you don't really need to worry about that here in financial reporting, but it's relevant if you like to help you understand why it's there from the world of the conceptual framework. And whenever you're preparing any of those financial statements, uh, whether it's for the group accounts, whether it's for the individual company accounts, whether it is there for a joint venture, you need to go through there and ensure there that you are preparing it based upon a going concern basis. 
And if we're preparing it on a going concern basis, we're making the assumption that the entity is able to continue for the foreseeable future. So that's longer than a year. And that's ultimately then, isn't it, why we show within your statement of financial position that split of current and non-current assets and current and non-current liabilities. Again, the detail that takes that then further is within IS1, which then specifically says what is current and what is non-current. But the framework is laying the foundations for what we then see, isn't it, within those international accounting standards at a later point within our syllabus. So examinability. There might be a, an objective test, multiple choice type question on it somewhere. But other than that, I don't think you're going to really see much about financial statements and reporting entity within the exam. OK, doesn't mean to say it won't crop up. If it does, it will be a very small part of any question.